honestly we just have a bunch of clowns as a you know as a, what do you call it now uh as senators and and, and you know people who are just presiding over our affairs they, it, it's just like a joke you understand like some sort of joke to them that really doesn't matter just a place where they go to go and while away the time anyway sir for some governors it's their retirement home where they just go and sit down and just say uh, you know just go there and just say uh, while away the hours they don't care they don't care on this senator ningi issue that senator there's a report here that uh, just in day after Ningi Trusty's legal action, Akpabio says Senate will leave suspension soon. Senate President Goswil Akpabio has announced plans for the Red Chamber to revoke the suspension imposed on Senator Abdul Ningi, PDP Bauchi Sendra. This development transpired just 24 hours after Senator Ningi penned a letter to Akpabio indicating his intention to pursue legal action if his suspension remained unresolved within a seven-day time frame. Senator Ningi's suspension stemmed from remarks made during a BBC Hausa interview wherein he alleged that the 2024 fiscal year budget had been inflated by $3.7 trillion. Following intense deliberations among senators during a plenary session, Ningi was suspended for three months and instructed to issue a formal apology to the Senate. In a letter written by his counsel, Femi Falan Hassan, Ningi accused Akbabu of being the accuser, the prosecutor, and the judge in the case which he said is in utter violation of the provisions of the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria. In the letter titled, Request to Leave the Suspension of Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi, dated Wednesday, March 27, 2024, Senator Ningi threatened to seek legal redress. The senator accused Akpabi of causing him to be put on trial before the Senate on March 14, 2024, contrary to the provisions of the Legislative House Powers and Privileges uh, Act 2018. But answering questions from newsmen on Friday on arrival from the Inter-Parliamentary uh, Union IPU meeting in Geneva, Switzerland, Akbabio said the Senate will soon review the three-month suspension. He said, it's a, pl a parliamentary decision. I have not seen the letter yet, but Senator Ningi is one of us. I mean, what is a suspension? I believe that in a few days he will join us, so there's no problem to be resolved amicably. The Senate is a family. Just listen, listen to him where he was actually saying this, and you just shake your head for Niger that the suspension of Senator Abdul Ningi be lifted within seven days or drag the Senate to court, Akbabio says the matter will be sorted. I haven't seen the letter yet. Well, the Senator Ningi is one of us, so, uh, I mean, what, uh, what is suspension? We expect that in a few days he will join us, so it's not a problem. Thank you very much. It will be resolved amicably. Thank you. <laughs> the Senate is a family. Honestly, there's so much clownery going on. And you look at the fact that this is a country where a lot of things aren't working very well. You could say the country, it's, it's in a big, big trouble, in a big, big mess. Yet these people who are supposed to be in offices, concerned about how to move Nigeria forward, they, they're just a bunch of jokers. They just see it as a joke. They just do this thing anyhow. Why did they let them stay now? Well, because we want to see. There have been absolute proof that indeed they padded those budgets to the tune of trillions. They padded the budget anyhow they went to. Budget, an organization that is always working with budget and breaking it down, they went through the line items one after the other and they were able to see all of these things. And so I did some video where I talked about the father. This, the Akwabio himself is the one that should be impeached. But what you have rather is the Ningi that has been put on suspension because Nigeria, of course, is always that country where it is the people who are doing the wrong thing that always seem to have, you know, the mozu and the power and the and the audacity and the enabling environment for them to continue to behave badly. Whereas the people who are doing the right thing are the, are the ones who are being punished. And that just even reminds me about, you know, the investigator who had done investigative journalism on the custom 
to show how much corruption there was in the custom, how smuggling was allowed, smuggling of arms, you know, uh, agricultural produce and all of that being brought into the country, putting the, and even drugs, putting the country uh, at, at risk. That particular journalist right now is the one that a police has put him on the wanted list. He's now uh, wanted by police. Meanwhile, the criminals that he unheard, that he has shown what they are doing, they are the ones that are free. So Nigeria is always that country where you actually get punished for doing the right thing. It is you that is put on trial and definitely not uh, the people who are actually doing uh, those wrong things over there. It's been crazy in Abuja. Um, honestly, it's it's been it's been something else. The the heat in Abuja is something else. I, I like I did a tweet the other day. I don't know how a lot of families without electricity and all of that are, are coping. The ACs are off. I just don't want to put on the fan because of the noise that uh, it sometimes made. It might interfere with this bed. Honestly, it's just uh, it, it's just uh, crazy. What, what what's going on? We live in a country where at every time the national grid is uh, is uh, is collapsing. We are thrown into darkness. You know. We, we've just become the, the butt of joke of uh, in Africa. And yet we just have a bunch of people who are supposed to be leading this country, just behaving anyhow and just doing uh, things the way that they want to do without any regard, you know, for, for, for the citizens, without fear of the citizens that they are, they, they are supposed to be leading. It, it can be so frustrating, honestly. Honestly, being in Nigeria can be such a frustration. But the thing, like I always say to every one of us as a father, we don't have option. Giving up can never be an option. We continue to be here. We continue to do the rightful. We continue to do the needful. We continue to participate. We continue to, to, we continue to work towards getting us that nation that belongs to all of us, that we all will be working uh, towards. And we must ensure that we definitely uh do 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 get this so let them continue what they are doing let them continue to do all of these things that they do one day it will no longer be business as usual it will become business un unusual and as we look at it we might be looking at it as if it's too far away it's far away or something that is impossible that can never happen but i always take uh solace in the words of nelson mandela where he said that um it's impossible until it's done. The moment it's done, it's no longer impossible. So we just keep going, we just keep trying until we get that thing done. And I and I can assure you that uh, indeed, we will get it done. It's about never giving up. It's about doing what we need to do. It's about ensuring that we're consistent in doing the right thing for Nigeria. Thank you.